Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. My name's Chris. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare my finished watercolor paintings for display. Instead of putting them under glass in a frame, sometimes I like to simply mount them on what's called a cradle board. This is birch wood board on a frame, or sometimes just simply mounting them on a piece of birch wood like that and putting them in an easel. This is a really great way to display your artwork and so let's get started. So if you are anything like me, after you've been painting in watercolor for a while, you may have a whole bunch of paintings just laying around your studio. I like to give them away. Sometimes I sell them at the local arts and crafts fair. And uh, oh, here's a self-portrait I did of me. I kind of like that one. And uh, so if I want to give these away or sell them, a lot of times I want to uh, present them or display them in a little bit more professional way uh, because I think they sell better when I do that. And so what I like to do is mount them on either cradle boards or on flat birch boards. A cradle board um, looks like this. And I actually just make these right here in my shop. Uh, at my house, but you can also purchase these online. I'll put a link in the description below if you would rather just buy them rather than make them. I also just simply cut up a big birch board. I go to my local Home Depot store, buy a four by eight foot sheet of birch wood, and I simply cut it up into a whole bunch of smaller pieces. You can see me doing that here in my shop. And uh, you can get a whole bunch of smaller boards like this uh, out of one four by eight sheet of birch panel. It's a very economical way to do it. To save time and be more efficient when I go out in my shop, I like to cut my board into all the most common sizes that I paint in. I, I cut up a bunch of five by sevens, some six by nine boards, some eight by 10, eight by 11, nine by 12s, and finally some 11 by 14 boards. These are the most common size I use when I paint in watercolor. Once I have all my birch boards or cradle boards prepared, I'm ready to go and mount the paintings. Okay, to get started, choose your painting and decide what size board or cradle board that you want to use for the painting. I'm going to crop this painting quite a bit so it fits on this six by nine board. Next, collect all your supplies. I'm going to suggest maybe some parchment paper you can put down on the tabletop to protect it from the uh, gel gloss that we're going to be using. This golden semi-gloss heavy gel it's a gel medium, is what we're going to be used to actually adhere the painting to the board. The first thing we're going to do is treat our painting with this Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating. This is the stuff I like to use the most. There's different types of fixatives you can use, but I like this because it's UV resistant and it's acrylic. It's not going to yellow or uh, over time, and it's going to really protect your painting really well. And then once the painting is adhered to the board and it's all dry, we're going to finish it with Dorland's Wax Medium. And this will give a nice matte finish, a slight little bit of gloss, and a really nice protective finish to the painting. I also suggest you have a couple inexpensive brushes like this for applying the gel medium. You might want to put on some gloves to protect your hands. Next, take your painting outdoors or to another well-ventilated area and spray with the fixative. I like to spray in both directions to make sure I get very good coverage. The fixative is now dry. They say to wait about two hours until it's completely dry before you handle it. And so now the next thing we need to do is figure out exactly how we want to crop the painting with the six by nine board. And that's a little hard to do. Uh, by just holding it here. So here's what I recommend. Simply get yourself a mat board and cut it at the two corners. Then place your mat board around the board that you're going to be using. Again, this is a six by nine. Using clips, clip the two corners so that these two L-shaped uh, mats are now exactly the same size as your board. Then take the mat that you've now sized properly and place it over your painting. And then you can decide exactly where you want to uh, crop the painting. Of course, you want to make sure the signature's in there and you want to make sure you've got a, a good composition. Take a pencil and make 
some very small marks in just in the corners. And then with a ruler, measure how far in from the edge those tick marks are. Next, turn the painting over. Ah, here's one of my secrets. I often paint on the other side of a painting that I did previously. If I don't like it, I just paint on the other side and uh, use the paper again. So, now I'm going to turn this over and I need to take my board, put it here, and transfer the uh, entire shape here. And once you get your board in the place where you want it, go ahead and just trace all the way around the board. Next, I'm going to put down some parchment paper. The gel medium that I use, again, is golden heavy gel. There is a soft gel. There's different types. I like the heavy gel for the most part. It's a semi-gloss. I'm going to use an old brush and just apply it to both the painting and the board. You don't want any portion of the board or the paper to not have the gel medium. The consistency of the gel medium is kind of like a pretty heavy paste, as you see here. Once you have consistently applied the gel medium to both the board and the paper, let's go ahead and take the board, turning it over, and apply it to the painting. Having drawn our lines on the paper, it's really easy to line up exactly where the board goes. Now we'll go ahead and turn it over and grab our brayer. Make sure your brayer's clean, and we will Go ahead and gently roll from the center of the painting out, making sure we remove any air bubbles trapped underneath the paper. Now one thing I've noticed when I've done this is it's actually possible for the paper to shift on the board as you're br using the brayer. So I would turn it over and check to make sure that your lines are still where you want them to be. Check the edges to make sure there's very good adhesion all along the edges. This step is very important. It really can't be done over again. So you want to make sure you're getting a really good adhesion of the paper to the board all the way around. Once you're satisfied that you have gotten all the air bubbles out, we're going to go ahead and put weight on top of this and leave it overnight and allow it, allow it to dry. I like to put another piece of parchment paper over the painting to protect it during the drying process. Next, I take another one of my birch boards, putting it in over the entire surface of the painting. Then I take a big stack of my watercolor books and put it on top, leave it overnight, and allow it to dry. Okay, my project has had plenty of time to dry, so let's go ahead and remove the books and the board. So our next step is to take an X-Acto knife and cut along the edge of the board. I've placed a cutting board underneath my uh, painting and uh, I'm ready to go ahead and cut around the edge. I'm using a really sharp X-Acto knife. It's best to always change your blade before every new project. That way you ensure you get a good cut. Okay, at this stage, you'll want to check the edges to make sure you have no gaps anywhere. You, if you did, you could take a little bit of the gel medium and um, simply it, uh, put it in, inside the gap and clamp it, again, letting it dry, and that would solve the problem. But mine looks great. Next stage is you can take a little bit of sandpaper and just lightly uh, sand the edges. Here I'm mostly sanding the edge of the paper and smoothing that. I've already sanded the edge of the board before I started this process. Now we're ready for the final step and that's to apply the Dorland's wax medium. For this stage, 
I like to use a paper towel to apply. Some people just use their fingers, either way works. And apply a nice generous dose of this wax medium to the surface of the painting. You don't have to worry about damaging the painting at this point, because remember you have sealed it with the fixative in the first step. And so your, your painting is, um, is safe from being harmed by the wax medium. I'm going to allow this to firm up for about 30 minutes, and then I'm going to buff it with a clean cloth. Okay, we're ready to buff the wax. Uh, I need a clean, lint-free cloth. There you go, we're finished. This uh, painting is now so well protected because of the fixative and now the wax medium that I could run this under a faucet and the paint would be protected. You can see here that there is a slight sheen to the painting, but it's not overly glossy and it's very well protected. Also, the fixative along with the wax has a tendency to really saturate the colors a bit more so they become more, um, a little bit richer and in some places darker and the colors more vibrant. And that's another advantage to finishing it in this way. There you go, I have a finished piece of watercolor artwork on a simple birch board. I can put it in an easel like this and it's ready to display. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a cost effective and fun way to mount your own artwork on boards for display. It's pretty easy to do. If you have any comments or questions about the process I used in the video today, just leave those in the comments below and I will get back to you right away. All the materials and supplies that I used in this video are linked in the description area below, so check that out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.